You're watching a documentary about dark matter, the invisible glue that holds the universe together, and you find out that scientists literally can't explain what it is. What do you mean they can't explain it? Aren't scientists supposed to know? Aren't they really smart? Well, Kyle, the answer to that is yes, they are really smart. There are just some things out there in the universe that we don't know the answer to yet. In fact, there are some mysteries out there even creepier than dark matter. Like all the missing energy in the universe we should see, but don't. Or how black holes even delete things from existence entirely. But perhaps it's best to start in the solar system, because there are mysterious things we don't even understand about our own sun. Yes, Kyle, the one thing that almost all organisms in the history of life have stared at since the very beginning, and we still don't know everything about it. Did you even know the sun has an atmosphere? You can't see it because it's so bright, but the solar corona is always visible during eclipses. Look at one of the first ever photos of it from the 1860s. Just that pale light stretching out like some creepy ghost. The problem is the corona isn't just hot. It's millions of degrees hotter than the surface below it. Literally one to three million degrees. The surface is only 5,800 degrees. That shouldn't be possible. He doesn't move from something cooler to something hotter. Every law of physics says this layer should be cold. Yet it's the hottest part of the sun we can see. Scientists think it might be magnetic waves or small solar flares heating it up, but none of the models match what we actually observe. The sun is breaking one of nature's most basic fundamental rules, and we still don't know why. Well, what's that, Kyle? You don't think the sun literally leaking turbo-heated gas into space is creepy enough for you? What? With a massive coronal mass ejection shooting off of it and hitting the Earth in what's called the Carrington event like in 1859 do the trick? And if that happened today, it would probably wipe out society as we know it, huh? Or maybe that the sun is being way more active than we remotely thought it would be right freaking now. Yeah, add it all together and we know diddly squat about our fate. So listen up and let's dial it back before we get into the truly mysterious sh Because if our own sun can break the rules of heat and surprise us like this, what else could there be out there? Well, far beyond the solar system, this very year, Kyle, scientists found a planet doing something it shouldn't. No, not that, you. This rogue planet is called Char 11077626, and it is about 600 light years away. It just drifts through space. It does not orbit a star at all. But instead of cooling in the dark like a normal planet would, or how we expect it to, it's gaining energy. What would do that, you ask? Well, observations show it's pulling in gas and dust at a rate of 6 billion tons per second. That's a feeding rate we only see in stars that are still forming, not rogue planets that are still forming in nowhere. The supremely mysterious part is, no one knows how it's doing it. It might be using powerful magnetic fields to funnel material inside itself, like me at my brother's wedding buffet last weekend, but it's not something we've ever seen a planet do before. One moment it appears quiet, and then within days it brightens by 10 times, like it's suddenly switched on. A planet without a star, that somehow behaves like one. We don't know what triggers it, how it lasts, or what it will become. Only that it shouldn't be happening at all. It's not aliens, I'll tell you that much. I'm sure of it. Probably. It might be. No, it isn't. Right? Nah, no, don't worry, I don't have a brainworm. And it's not just this one. In the Orion Nebula, astronomers have found dozens of planet-sized binaries, each about the mass of Jupiter, drifting through space without a star, yet some are orbiting each other. These are called jumbos, and they shouldn't exist at all either. No model fits, no theory predicts them. They're as weird as the girls I match on Tinder with in the first swipe. Some of those faces still give me nightmares, but hey, it was good to get out there again. You know, it's been years since I felt the gentle touch of a loving whip. <coughs> anyway, enough about the sun and the planets. Where is the truly outrageous stuff at? The mysterious rules and laws in space that violate the universe and physics itself. That offend the greatest minds by making them realize they know nothing in comparison to that which is everything. I present the Cosmic Dawn. So here's the thing, Kyle. We thought we knew when the first stars turned on. The Cosmic Dawn. That's what astronomers literally call it. I'm not trying to be a poet. But yes, it was supposed to happen around 400 million years after the Big Bang. Before that, the universe was dark. No light, no stars, just hot hydrogen gas starting to cool down and waiting to ignite. 
but the James Webb Space Telescope had to go and ruin everything. The data it's returning shows galaxies forming way too early, as in barely a hundred million years after the Big Bang. The earliest image we have directly is of a galaxy from 280 million years after the Big Bang, and we found this object in 2025, MOM Z14. But there is more. There are entire structures of gas and galaxies shining brighter and heavier than our models allow. The universe shouldn't have had enough time to build them, so... What is it? What could it be? Maybe dark matter comes faster than expected. Maybe our understanding of time and gravity is just wrong. But whatever existed that soon after the Big Bang must have been very strange. Imagine cavemen like galaxies compared to the ones we know today. Yet this leads to another mystery. One that is even more intense than who is Gravipool and was he once human? Yes, Kyle, you've heard that the universe has been expanding ever since the Big Bang. We knew that. But for most of the universe's history, that expansion was slowing down. Gravity was doing its job pulling galaxies together, forming clusters, stars, planets, the most complex IKEA furniture, everything. Then about 9 to 10 billion years after the Big Bang, something changed. The expansion started speeding up. That shouldn't have happened. Gravity doesn't just give up. It always wins, right? But suddenly, it's as if some invisible force started pushing everything apart faster and faster and faster, and that force has a name. That's when dark energy took over. The universe. 68% of it to be exact. We don't know why it happened, or when it actually started, it just did. Like why do you walk your cat at night in the park when it eats the Can't you just buy a litter box? Exactly, you just do. So that means the universe went from massive inflation and a big bang, to only radiation, to galaxies forming, and for 9 to 10 billion years, matter keeps forming galaxies and stars and planets, and then suddenly, the universe expands and dark energy takes over. The question is, where was it hiding before that? Just this creepy form of matter and energy that exists and determines our future? What's that, Kyle? What is dark energy? Man, if I know, no one knows yet. We 100% know it's there for measurements, but what is it exactly? I know more about the armpit of that ripped angry goose over there that keeps chasing me every time I want to do my groceries than I do about dark energy. On that note, why are geese always so damn angry anyway? I need to look into that. But the tension I feel from that violent bird haunting me is nowhere near the tension the universe is giving scientists. That's because dark energy is only part of the mystery. Welcome to the Hubble Tension. It's simple. We have two ways of measuring how fast the universe is expanding, and that's called the Hubble Constant. But then, these two numbers don't agree. When astronomers look at the cosmic microwave background that left over radiation from the Big Bang, they get one number. But when they measure the expansion using nearby galaxies and supernovas, they get a different number. Both are supposed to describe the same thing, how far space itself is stretching. But no matter how precise our instruments get, the two results refuse to agree and both sides insist they're right. If the early universe measurements are correct, then modern galaxies are moving faster than they should be. If the nearby measurements are right, then our understanding of the Big Bang is wrong. It means either our math or the universe itself has been lying to us. See, the forces you know that control the universe, electromagnetism, the weak force, the strong force, were simply one combined force as the universe was being born. That's the Grand Unified Theory, or GUT. At unimaginable energy levels, they should merge, and yes, the math even hints at it. But every time we try to prove it, reality refuses. And if you're a smart cookie like all our beautiful subscribers at home who no doubt have abs of steel and gigantic brains, subscribe to 100% maybe get a big brain, you'd notice I didn't mention gravity, the fourth fundamental force of the universe, because it wasn't merged with the other three. If GUT is true, the universe began as one entity and split into four forces to form the universe we know today. If it isn't true, then the forces were never one to begin with, which means we'd have to question if the Big Bang really was as big a bang as we thought. Okay, Kyle, I can see your brain is somewhat freaked out by the mystery of existence and how it seems like we know everything, but also nothing. It's okay, I can help. Let's zoom right in. Let's go quantum for a second really quantum. Because when scientists look at atoms, the rules break again. Surprise. At that scale, nothing behaves normally. 
Particles don't exist in one place or another, they exist everywhere at once, until you look at them. That's the quantum measurement problem. Reality doesn't pick a state of existence until it's observed. Think about that. The act of looking decides what's real. It's like Schrodinger's cat thought experiment. You put him in a box and he's both alive and dead or both until you open the box. Observation decides which reality you actually get. So what's doing the observing in terms of looking at the atoms? Like who determines if something is being observed and by whom? Is it us? Anything with a consciousness? The universe watching itself? We don't know, and that's not even the most insane, weird, terrifying mystery of the quantum realm. It's quantum entanglement. This is where two particles in space become linked, no matter how far apart they are. What does that mean? It means if you observe a particle here in your room, another one 100 million light years away will know. Immediately and without hesitation. Yes, Kyle, faster than light. It's not information being sent, it's just an instantaneous understanding. This is literally the most Halloween level sh that even Einstein called spooky action at a distance because it violates everything we know about space and time. So what even connects these particles in the first place? We don't know, but scientists have tested this many times so they know it's real. Like that goose. <laughs> Honestly, it's kind of blowing my mind, Kyle. Kyle, are you alive? Kyle! I thought I lost you there for a second. How are you feeling? You ready for some black holes? Yeah? Black, you like those? Okay, let's do it. Because the biggest, strangest, and most mysterious objects in the universe also break its most fundamental rule, that information cannot be destroyed. Black holes do exactly that. Maybe. When something falls in, like light, matter, even stars, it gets crushed down in a singularity, a point smaller than anything we can describe, infinite density. All the details of what it was like, its composition, where it came from, its history, personality, favorite drink, they all vanish completely. That's the black hole information paradox. According to quantum mechanics, that information should still exist somewhere. But according to general relativity, it's gone. Stephen Hawking once described black holes as the ultimate delete button. But if the universe deletes information, then the laws of physics break. Because without information, the universe can't keep track of cause and effect. If I push you, you fall. If that goose catches me, it'll commit violence upon me. But fortunately, Hawking not only discovered that black holes evaporate over 10 to the 100 years, but he also has a hypothesis called the no hair theorem, which makes it even worse. It says all black holes are identical except for three properties, mass, charge, and spin. That means you could throw a planet into it, a star, or your disgusting gym bag, and it wouldn't matter. The black hole doesn't remember. Some scientists and Hawking now argue that maybe the information isn't lost actually, just scrambled on the event horizon. That the surface of black holes somehow record everything that ever fell into it. This would solve the information paradox, but that doesn't solve what's inside. Some theories say if you somehow cross the event horizon of a black hole, you'd never hit a singularity at all. Instead, you'd fall into a region of warped space-time Maybe even a quantum fuzzball, where gravity and quantum mechanics blur into something we don't have words for. Which means others think there are many different kinds of singularities that could open wormholes with the ability to travel between universes. Whatever's inside, no one can agree. And yet, Kyle, there's one last mystery I have to share with you. Because I think that goose is ready to finally take a nap, which uh, means I can go shopping for dinner tonight. When scientists mapped the afterglow of the Big Bang, they found a simply enormous patch of space colder than everywhere else, and in the most creative way possible, it was called the cold spot, stretching nearly 2 billion light years across. It's not just empty, it's so empty that even light passing through it loses energy, as if space itself is draining it. Some call it a super void, others think it's something worse, a scar from when our universe collided with another. If that were true, we're living inside a universe that's already been hit! And that is just terrifying and insane. Much like if the largest objects in the universe collided.